pray with me? Oh, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. (laughs) Promises, promises. (laughs) Our lives are filled with promises, and the Bible is filled with promises. Um, So our reading tonight is the very first covenant that God makes with God's people in the Bible. Um, A covenant is kind of like a promise, but a little bit more, because you can promise things that aren't, you know, I I promise you that I didn't do this, I promise you I will, but um, a a covenant is kind of between both parties. It's like, I'm promising you this, and it has to do with what I do in our relationship. (coughs) So this is the first covenant that God makes with God's people in the Old Testament, and in this case, it's to Noah and his family. And this is after the waters of the flood have cleansed the earth, And God promises Noah and all creation, all the things, never to do that again. Sometimes when people ask me about God causing death, I refer back to this promise. And the very first story in in the, in the Old Testament, the creation story. Because they both say to me that God is about giving life and not taking it away. For all time, back then, all the way up until now, God has created and covenanted with God's people to save them from their sinful brokenness and restore their lives, our lives, to give us new life. And all throughout Lent, we're going to be reading about covenants that God made with the people to restore life or give life back or bring forth new life, which seems like a really excellent way to prepare for the resurrection, doesn't it? That's coming up at the end of all of this. Spoiler alert, he he rises again. So let's let's talk about all the ways that build up to that, right? So, but I I digress. Um, So let's get back to today's story about Noah and God's covenant. When we remember our baptism in church, uh, instead of confession, sometimes Pastor Steve or I will get up here and we'll pour the water in as we're saying the words and we give thanksgiving for our baptism. And it's at that time that we remember that God delivered Noah through the waters of the flood. It's in our service. If you look it up in the hymnal, that's one of the first things we say in our thanksgiving to baptism. So God delivered Noah through the waters of the flood, or he saved him, and then he makes a promise to him and to creation never to flood the earth again. And it's part of that thanksgiving for baptism. So speaking of baptism, shameless little plug for our theme. Y'all are supposed to laugh at that. Speaking of baptism, Tonight in this year's Lenten scene is all about the covenant that God makes with us in baptism and how we're called to live out our lives and respond to that covenant. At our baptism or our affirmation of baptism, there are five things that we promise or covenant to do in response to what God's gift has given to us. That first promise we make is to live among God's faithful people. So who is that, you ask? Who are God's faithful people? Well, I'm going to point to some of those people. This is our first edition of what we're going to be adding to the baptismal font, and these are people of our church community here, our church community APLC. Now, there are some people that aren't pictured here because we don't have your picture, hint, hint, Um, but we have all these pictures here of our community. This is our community of faith. So even if your picture isn't up here, You're part of God's faithful people. And part of God's faithful people are the other people in the other Lutheran churches in San Antonio and throughout the ELCA and the world, and all the other people in the Christian churches. God's faithful people is a large group of people. We're all children of God. And so that's who we are to make sure we live with in our lives. And why is it, should we do this? What is, what is this a covenant? Why is this a covenant that we make? Um, So, To think about it, I want to first listen to an audio clip that I found that I think explains it very well. Okay, I just left my workout class, and every time I go, there's usually this woman named Terry there. She's 60 years old, she's covered in tattoos, and let me tell you about Terry. Anytime the instructor says to do something really hard that none of us want to do, Terry goes, woo! And it is electrifying because let me tell you what that does. As a group, as a collective, the instructor goes burpees. And a lot of times in other classes, we're all like, oh, 
with Terry, anytime that she is there, it starts with Terry going, woo! And then each time the instructor says something harder and harder and harder, eventually by the end of the class, every single person in the room, 40 of us, we all go, woo! And we go into those burpees and we are feeling like buzzing, like as a room, like we can do this. What if we did this in our everyday life? I want to see challenges and I want to go, woo, instead of doing something hard and feeling disgruntled the whole time. Energy is contagious. So when I show up and I'm going, woo, to a challenge, that means the entire team, it's going to spread. They're not going to be disgruntled. We're going to collectively figure this out. We're going to face a challenge and we're going to rock the out of this challenge. We could do this at work. We could do this at home. We could do this alone. Be Terry. Be Terry. So be Terry. Terry takes on the challenges and Terry says, woo! And by the end of the workout, everyone is excited again about why they're there exercising together. And she says, what if we did this in life? What if every time a challenge presented itself to us, we all went, woo! And so that's kind of what I think it means to be part of God's faithful people. Um, or like this last weekend, there was a group of women, 13 of us that stayed overnight and 14 in, in total that did a work at Camp Chrysalis. And you know, it's, uh, it's one thing to talk about like coming to church and live among God's faithful people. And it's another thing to go and live among God's faithful people because you learn about each other, right? And you learn all the good and all of the, you know, I put myself in snore is four. Like there's one rooms, one, two, three, and four snore is four. That was me. Just as a warning, you learn things about people when you live together, and you learn things about God when you live together. And that's the purpose. We worked so hard. We served together. It was amazing. I cannot even tell you the amount of work we got done. And usually we quit at 5. We worked all the way until 6. We were like, we're going to get the rest of this brush. We're going to do it. And we did it because we were all together in that. And even the people that decided they needed to go back to the cabin, they were rooting for us. They were so excited when we came in and we were able to finish all of that work together. And that's kind of like what worship is on Sundays for us too. When we live among God's faithful people, we gather together, we live together for maybe just a few hours. We eat a meal, we come and worship, we eat another meal. And we encourage one another. Because when we live our lives among God's faithful people, we're living in relationship. We've been created to be in relationship with each other, with our neighbors, and with God. And we learn from one another, and God knows that sometimes we need a little encouragement. We need Terry. We need woo! Baptism is the last covenant that God makes with the people because bapti baptism into Christ's death and resurrection is all we need. It's part of the new covenant in Jesus' blood that God makes with us. So tonight we're learning about the very first covenant and the very last and everlasting covenant that God has made with God's faithful people. So let us open the eyes of our hearts as we tonight promise once again to continue living this faith with each other, serving, loving, teaching, and encouraging one another. Say it with me.